here are four queens from ancient history who had to fight patriarchy to become great rulers Hatshepsut upon the death of her husband and half brother Thutmose the 2nd Hatshepsut ascended the throne as the queen of Egypt in 1479 BCE In order to establish herself in the Egyptian patriarchy she took on traditionally male roles and was depicted as a male pharaoh with physically masculine traits including the false beard and traditional male garb One of the most prolific builders in ancient Egypt she oversaw large scale construction projects such as the Karnak temple complex the Red Chapel the Speos Artemidos and most famously the mortuary temple at Deir al-Bahari After Hatshepsut's death her successor Amenhotep II systematically erased all evidence of Hatshepsut from Egyptian history by replacing her name with his and other male rulers Empress Luji Luji was the grand empress of China in the 2nd century BCE playing an important role in the rise and foundation of her husband emperor Gaozu and his dynasty Luji became the empress dowager of China after her husband's death and as the mother to the new ruler emperor Hui Luji ruthlessly killed two prominent generals who played an important role in her husband's rise to power for not helping at a later point while treating all other concubines of her husband with deserving courtesy she brutally murdered concubine ki and her son for a possible usurping of her son horrified by his mother's cruelty emperor hui no longer got involved in state affairs leading luji to take complete power and becoming the empress of entire china though she ruled the male dominated china with an iron fist luji's 15 year old rule was efficient and made china more prosperous rudrama devi also known by her regnal name rudradeva maharaja rudrama devi was a kakatiya queen regnant who ruled substantial parts of present day telangana and andhra pradesh in 12th century ad she is one of the most successful female rulers of indian history rudrama's father king ganapati considered his daughter equal to a son and appointed her the heir apparent rudrama thus promoted a male image to rule in a patrilinear society that traditionally excluded women from political power she assumed a male name and wore masculine clothing the reign of rudrama was remarkable for the rise of several non aristocratic warriors in the kakatiya service she strengthened the warangal fort by raising the height of its inner wall and constructing an outer wall surrounded by a moat Rudrama lost much of her southern territory to a revolt by the Kayastha chief Ambadeva and likely lost her life in a conflict against him in 1289. Razia Sultana. Razia Sultana was the first female Muslim ruler of the subcontinent. According to a possibly apocryphal legend, impressed by her successful administration of Delhi while her father Sultan Iltumish was away on a military campaign, Iltumish nominated Razia as his heir apparent after returning to Delhi. Being a woman, Razia's ascension was challenged by a section of nobles, some of whom ultimately joined her while the others were defeated. The nobles who supported Razia expected her to be a figurehead but she increasingly asserted herself. Initially, she put a screen that separated her throne from the courtiers and the general public and she was surrounded by female guards. However, later she started appearing in public dressed in traditional male attire, wearing a cloak and a hat. 
She rode on elephants through the streets of Delhi, making public appearances like the earlier sultans. Razia's increasing influence and her appointment of non-Turkic people to important posts created resentment among the Turkic nobles which eventually led to her imprisonment and execution within only four years after her ascending the throne. Razia Sultana still remains the only woman to have sat upon the throne of Delhi. These four extraordinary women from different corners of the world, from different cultural backgrounds, from different timelines had one thing in common. They had to fight against the male-dominated, the patriarchal society which wanted to tame women within the four walls. When men did what they did, they are called powerful, visionary and heroic. When a woman does it, she is called devious, greedy and power hungry. Yet they fought all odds and made profound impact in human history and paved way for many powerful women to follow in the later centuries. Namaste.